Detroit Den 313. We are back. Stephen Will talking that Detroit Lions football. Today is a special day. Today is a special day. Steve, I'm giddy about this one. This is one of those ones we've been keeping in the back pocket. Before we get going, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. But forget the new content. Today is the day. Steve, tell the people who we're talking about. So yesterday, I was kind of sad because yesterday, both of our episodes yesterday, we're kind of talking about guys that we didn't want, guys that didn't really fit. Um, we weren't trying to knock the guys. We just, like I said before, you know, we're talking draft prospects. There's what, three, 400 kids out there that are trying to get NFL NFL jobs. We're not going to love every single one of them. But what we do love doing is having an interaction with our fans, our subscribers, people who comment on our videos regularly. It's greatly appreciated. We read and see every single thing. When we see names in the comments, we have to dive in. These are two names today I haven't seen. We're giving you guys a little sneak peek, kind of. We're going to introduce you to two guys who I need one of them to be a Detroit Lion today. I don't care, plain and simple. But I don't want to spoil it. But we're going to be talking Max Melton, the cornerback out of Rutgers, and Braden Fisk, the defensive tackle out of Florida State. Let's start with – I want to save I want to save the best for last. I'm not going to lie. So let's start with Max Melton. The cornerback out of Rutgers, six foot, 190 pounds. You're going to disrespect Max like that? I, I am because I'm not disrespecting him. I like the kid, but <laughs> let's let's save it for, for the end. I'm just saying <laughs> I like I like my cake after dinner. You know, that, that, that's I like all that. I'm going to say. I so like Max that. Mellon, quarterback, Rutgers, listed at six foot. Some th- sites have him 5'11". These, these, these heights and weights are just so far off from some sites. It's it's crazy. But the, the, the combine is going to sort all this out for us. Max Melton, talk to him. Steve. He he is. He's he's listed at six at six foot. He was at the senior bowl. He looked six foot, but more importantly, he looked like this. Jacked. But angry. Swole. He a lot like was, me. A lot like you. Very similar. <laughs> Thank you. Other than he's got muscles and you don't. But anyways, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Listen, this kid. Wow. Wow. When we talk about the Brian Branches, when we talk about the Divine Weatherspoons, listen, this kid is a very similar hitter. He's very similar with his physicality. He is instant grit and physicality to our team. Now, is he going to come in and play cornerback one? No, guys. That's not what we're talking about for this guy. He would be one of those. He would either be the pick um, at 61 or probably the first pick if he's still there in the third round and he slides. I don't see him going that far. I think you got to pick him in the second round if you want him. And he's a guy that I, I could see as being worth it. He is physical in a world, in a world where, excuse me, we maybe we trade back from 29 and get an extra pick. I would be ecstatic if he was a Detroit Lion. Like, he just fits everything that the Detroit Lions need to me. And he comes from that pedigree. But mom, dad, Division One athletes, brother, playing receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Rivalry. Buddy. <laughs> Buddy. Another sibling rivalry. We already got Another, the Sewells. Yep. We already got the St. Browns. You throw in the, the, the Meltons. Yep. We're going to have a civil war on our hands. Steve, how would you feel about him when you watched him? Um... I don't know that he's a second round pick for me personally. I saw fourth rounder, which means for us, the Detroit lions, not having a fourth rounder, probably a third round pick. Um, I think third rounders are are starters. I also don't, I agree with you. I don't see cornerback one. I see quarterback two. Bye-bye. Kendall Vildor. See you later. Bon voyage, safe travels, thoughts and prayers, whatever you need to hear to get out of town, (laughs) catch the ball with your hands, not your face mask. Um, I would like him in the third round. Second round's a little, uh, little, little high for me. I don't know about that, but um, I, I like his style of play. When I use the word physical, it's an understatement. What I yeah. saw him do to some running backs on some screen passes, some bubble screens, uh, some receivers on some short slants, like he's tackling you. He's not trying to tackle you. He's trying to put you six feet under the ground in nice. the football, in, in a safe football way. Yeah. Like yeah. not in a dirty way. Yeah. Oh, it's not dirty. He's hitting you right in your chest and trying to end your life. And obviously, we don't want to end your life, but maybe end your day of football. 
maybe put you out for a few weeks because you're concussed. This oh, no, physical. we don't want that. We don't, we already got Kirby Joseph, who's claimed to be you know a dirty player in the NFL. We can't have another one. Yeah, he's just hitting you in your chest. He he's not nipping at ankles. He's hitting you in your chest. He's physically one of the things we talked about uh, the other day with Cam Hart. Um, he is as described very physical at the point of attack. He's physical with the hits. Um, I would believe that he probably eats physical. <laughs> he he probably eats his food. <laughs> like, yeah, this dude save it because I got I got a good one for for brain <laughs> physically <laughs> on what he eats. Because <laughs> right. I'm telling you, man, they said they talked to him at the Senior Bowl, and during the interview, they said, "Man, don't hit me, man, because you just been running around hitting everybody all week." And he was like, "Oh, man." I'm 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 not gonna hit you, but yeah, everybody else is is up for grabs. Yeah. Welcome to welcome to football. That's what we but, do here, <laughs> man. So love the kid, man. For me, I would have to get him with one of those round three picks. I don't know that he would be there, but hey, I would have told you that after the first 10, 15 picks, Brian Branch wouldn't be there. So living in a world to where one of those third round picks, he's still on the board. Couldn't get him to Detroit quick enough. But that being said. At pick 29 and pick 61, I think we have a vision for where this other kid that we're going to talk about today could fall to and end up on the Detroit Lions. Steve, what are you thinking? Here's something I can, I'm confused about. I got a question for you first. All right. Um, I was reading some articles, doing some homework. I've been up all morning, diving in, sent the wife out, go run your errands. You know, I'm watching some football up in the office. Yeah. Some articles and analysis are saying that he's the best press coverage DB in this class. And others are saying that he's the best zone corner co- cop in this draft. Yeah. Which one is it or is it both in your opinion? I think he does both well. I, I don't both. think that he I don't think that he is a elite press corner. Uh, and by elite, I mean Sauce Gardner. All right. But he does both well. And he's very confident in both. And when you're talking about him uh at the senior bowl. He said, what the NFL is going to find out that I can do everything a cornerback needs to do, and I can hit like a safety. I said, Merry Christmas to the Detroit Lions. Go get them. <laughs> Merry, <laughs> Merry Christmas of, in February. Yeah, yeah because uh, <laughs> because when I looked at the film, he he wasn't he wasn't lying, or as my kids say, he wasn't capping. So, listen, he I, I'm excited for it. He does play zone well. And the thing that I like about zone is him in zone is because you said something that was phenomenal uh, yesterday. You don't judge a cornerback by interceptions, right? But when you have a guy that's this physical, he's going to come up and put licks on you. He's going to make you ask questions about, should I sit in this zone with him bearing down on me? Do I catch this football? Do I turn and try to get yards after catch, or do I just get down? And he is going to be trying to knock that football away from your body. I love that aspect of it as well. That's another way that we can get turnovers. And when we're talking about the Brian Branches of the world, who's always trying to get after the football, man, just adding him to this mix. Yes. I got, I got a question for you, and it's a layup. Yep. Easy question. I expect an easy answer. Okay. See a Dan Campbell guy? Buddy. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm not even going to get into that. Yes. And yeah. also, um, you mentioned Christmas time. I think it's always Christmas time in the Ford House when that Christmas tree still up in mid-February. But I will tell you that, <laughs> which I know is um, still up for a fact. I, I I will tell you that again. There will be no comment because I like where I rest my head. Um, so when it comes to Max Melton, you're in hundred percent round. Funny. What round? I am in. Um, at uh, the first pick of round three, I am one hundred percent in. Listen, if they took if it's, him, if it's a reach and it's round two, you you upset, you angry, you nervous. There's going to be some guys on the board that you're passing on to take Max Melton is how I'm looking at it. Here's here's the thing. And uh, you, you you sprinkled one on me here. I love the kid. Depending on what we did in free agency, there are some guys that I absolutely love, absolutely love for our second round pick. I would say Max is a guy that I'm strongly in like with, but there's some, there's two guys that I'm in love with and um, he's probably third or fourth on that list. So if those guys are still on the board, I, I'm not going to use the word disappointed, but I, I would be, I would be in, in, in conflict. 
Round two for me, hard no. Not going to change my mind. Like the kid, if he's available in round three, I can see us getting a, a, a third round pick day one starter at round mm-hmm. three. I think that's better value. Round two is kind of a reach. And, and I know Brad Holmes has reached before and it's worked out. So I'm not going to knock it if it happens. But uh, for me personally, round three, you're getting me a day one starter, cornerback to taking over Kendall Vildor, Vildor's job, day one, preseason, training camp. He's going to be the cornerback number two. Um, anything else about Max Milton? Or Melton, Max Melton, Steve. Because I'm itching to get to this next kid, Steve. Steve. Yeah. Bring him. Bring him to the people. Come on. I I, I need it. <laughs> I, <right>. need it. <laughs> I am way more in love with what I see in Braden Fisk, the defensive tackle out of Florida State. This kid is an absolute unit. Six Steve. five, three hundred pounds. Yes. Yes. And. Does not look 300 pounds. When you think 300 pounds, you're thinking like fat, sloppy, out of shape. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to use this comparison, but when I look at Aaron Donald, he's a, uh, what, like 290 and yeah. chiseled. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say Braden Fisk is chiseled, but he's got the same muscle mass tissue that I see from Aaron Donald, where it's good, good, solid weight instead of, uh, body fat percentage. I think he is very, very lean for 300 pounds. And I, you want to know what you, you, you almost stole my thunder. I know what Braden Fisk eats for breakfast. It's a big bowl of nails. <laughs> I mean, you're just not wrong. Pour some nails in a bowl, maybe some 2% milk. And I'm just going to eat breakfast. Cause this kid uh-huh. is scary. Violent. Yeah. 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 He, uh, uh, well, first, first things first. Uh, with the Aaron Donald, I gotta slow you down a little bit. But here's what I will I was not say. comparing him to Aaron Donald. No, 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 no. I know that. Well, I'm talking about the physical look. But I will say this: I feel like he looks better physically than Aaron Aaron Donald coming out of college. Aaron Donald was a little chubby guy coming out of college. Like, so if you're telling me we live in a world to where now this guy is going to go get a trainer like a Lee McNeil, he's going to be, or even Aiden Hutchison, he's going to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week, focused on his physical body, what he might look like. I can't imagine. (laughs) I can't imagine. He's still just a baby, even though he's a senior in college, um, one of the more experienced defensive tackles, but let's just get into his gameplay because this is almost, he's almost a must need for me on my team. The Detroit Lions had a saying last year for their defensive line. You remember what it was? I know you no. probably do. Oh, Once buddy. you say it, I'll remember. Oh, buddy. It was violence. Uh, violence. Yeah. <laughs> violence. <laughs> violence. Violence. Buddy, this dude's violent. <laughs> this dude's violent. He's violent, guys. We can't tell. this. He needs to be a Detroit Lion. Listen, like when we were just talking about Max Melton, that second round pick, Needs to go to him or Rook, period. Braden Fisk or, or Rook or Aurora, Aurora, Aurora? Yeah, Aurora. Aurora. That's, That's what I said. it. That's it. Like that second round pick needs to go to one of those two guys. They both can run. They're both like, I'm not even going to get into Rook. We're only going to talk about Braden here. Listen, he's six foot five. He's 300 pounds. He can run. He's got violent hands. He's explosive at the, uh, the snap. Um, he can anchor in the run game. He can rush the passer, buddy. He needs to be a Detroit lion because the icing on the cake is he absolutely loves football, loves it. Every coach you hear talk about him talks about the fact that he loves football. The dude had the opportunity to sit out in the, in the playoffs, the back half of the season he played because he loves football and he loves this team. He's a team guy. He's a culture guy. He's a grit guy. The dude eats nails for breakfast. Please, 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 Brad, please draft him. Please draft him. Please draft him. If you guys are wondering if I like him, I don't like him. I love him. Steve, don't even ask me at the end. <laughs> Is I he a Dan him. Campbell guy? <laughs> He's gritty. <laughs> so what I saw, a six foot five, 300 pound kid. Oh, he's still a kid. You're in college. You're still a kid to me, baby. What I seen him doing to some quarterbacks and not just straight up pressures up the middle, but running them down on some bootlegs. Yes. Like I, when I, when the defensive tackles get out there next week and they're lining up for the 40 yard dash and, and at the combine, I'm going to be when Braden Fisk comes up, 
But <laughs> four six. Uh, 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 possibly, it, possibly four six at three hundred pounds. I just, I just, all I need him to do is run anything below like four nine. Like, I think he's going to be in that four six four seven range. Yeah, because I, think I saw, I think it was against Louisville. They did a little QB boot, and Braden Fisk absolutely ran him down. Yeah, he's like an this guy had a ten yard head start on him. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely an athlete. And then when you're talking about him, that's one of the things we like about you know defensive line in general, and we want to move towards as far as you and I talk about all the time with these mobile quarterbacks. We got to have answers for them. We can't have these guys that are statues that just plug plug gaps and stop the run. And then the quarterbacks running around doing what he wants, i.e. NFC championship game with Brock Purdy even running around. Like we have to have guys who can get penetration and then run you down at the quarterback position. And he can definitely I rem- do that. I remember a game where I was at the Detroit Lions game and you were there too. And I was absolutely getting fucking pissed because we could not stop a quarterback boot to save our lives. And it was last season, 2022, against the Seattle Seahawks. Geno mm-hmm. Smith did a play action boot probably 15 times with just all kinds of space. He could, he could probably run it and get 15 yards. There was no one really around him. All the defense flowed to the opposite side. When I watched that play against, I think it was Louisville and Braden Fisk ran him down. That was the first game that jumped into my head was, Oh my God, this would have, this could have been the game. The difference in the game was Seattle. And if we win that game, we go to the playoffs, hot team, who knows what happens. That, that was two years ago. But if you guys don't remember that game, Geno Smith torched us on, on some boots. Um, I like what I see from this kid, just running people down. And then we can talk about how quick he pushes an offensive guard into a quarterback and is tackling a guard and the quarterback at the same exact time yep. or a running back. It's it, it happens numerous times. Yeah, violent, man. He's just violent. I do have one grievance, though, and it involves him and Jim Carball. Uh-oh. Um, Steve. I know where you're going because he's, he's from the Midwest. Buddy. He's a transfer From out of Western West, Michigan. Yeah. Western Michigan. How did he get out of Western Michigan and not come to Ann Arbor? In a world where him and Mason Graham are next to each other, Kenny I think the, uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is the fight that would have ensued to get 55. Yeah, but I would have been here for it. <laughs> like, wrestling match, buddy. Just had these guys wrestle. For 55 to see who's getting it. If that's not enough training for the season, I don't know what is. Buddy, he is a dog. Jim, I just, you dropped the ball. That's two because Rook had ties to Michigan too. I don't know how you didn't get those two guys. I know our D-line is nasty, but, man, those seem like those would have been two layups. They're right in your backyard. If you, you're you sleeping at all these guys' houses, man, you could have just, <laughs> just – Are you really right about to road. get on here and say Jim Harbaugh dropped the ball while he's got a national championship ring on his finger? Buddy, I'm just saying – I don't know that he dropped the ball, but uh, – I'm maybe. just saying, life, life could have been easier for him, man. Life yeah. could have been easier. Golly. Smoking Washington by 21 was was easy enough, William. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. Hey, hey. beggars can't be choosers. We're national <laughs> championships true. at the end yeah. of the day. That's true. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying. Um Absolutely. Second round pick. I'm okay with it. I'm leaning towards a third, but if we get up there on day two and he's the pick, I'm more than okay. Buddy, if he gets up there on day two and drafts him, if you're booing, you might have to you might have to you you might have to get these hands. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I'm gonna be asking you some questions about life, like hey. What are we talking about here? How much college football do you watch? Have you watched him? Yeah, what are we we talking about? He is – I do have to give a shout-out, too, because one of our subscribers did mention him, and that's a good eye because I haven't heard anybody talking about him. So uh, great job to you guys, man. They're out there doing – Yeah, I do remember someone mentioning him maybe like last week. Uh, Not only – there's only one guy, so whoever you are, come get get your flowers because you deserve it. But um, I'm glad you mentioned Mason Graham because – I think Mason Graham is a good comparison. I know Mason's younger. He's not eligible. Defensive tackle out of Michigan, if you're not familiar. Absolute game wrecker. I think Braden Fisk is the Mason Graham of the ACC. I see a lot of similar. Like, you could put these guys in the same uniform next to each other, same number, and I probably wouldn't know the difference. They yeah. both play the same type of game. So if you're not familiar with Mason Graham, you will be next season when he's coming out in the NFL draft, possibly, unless he decides to return. But um, I think that's a good comparison, just college-wise. Um, yeah. Similar player, similar explosiveness, game wreckers. Like we we saw Mason Graham wrecking the game for Alabama, mm-hmm. the national championship game. Like Braden Fisk, same thing against uh, Louisville in the ACC championship. His last play for Florida State, 
I, I don't know if he played in their bowl game, but his last play for Florida State yeah. was a sack on Louisville, and he said that's how I wanted to end my regular season. So that, that's that's my kind of guy. Buddy, get him to Detroit. I can't get him to Detroit quick enough. Please, if they draft him in the second round, I would be ecstatic. I don't need him in the third round. Um, yeah, like day one oh, starter. Day one, man. Day one, get him in there. He's six five, and when he's not getting home, he's knocking down footballs. Um, he he is just an absolute fit for everything that the Detroit Lions are and they're about. Um, that's it. Get them there. Here. It is, guys. Two absolute studs. Game 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 day wreckers. Day one starters for the Detroit Lions if they're picked. Max Melton, Braden Fisk. Can't miss with either one of them. So leave some more names in the comments. We'll dive into it. We'll do we'll do some digging. We'll do some research. Hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button, guys. We'll be back later with some more content. Peace.